it's a beautiful day for rock hounding and shadow and i are going to drive up the canyon we're going to come to us 18 we're going to make a left we're going to go through the little town of veo and then come to an intersection where if we went right it would take us to pine valley we're going to turn left which is central utah a little town called central where we're kind of that whole little area is and when we turn left it quickly turns to a dirt road and very shortly thereafter shadow <laughs> we're going to be rock hounding so we're off Okay, we made it. We parked right here on this little dirt road. And really anywhere around here, you just kind of start meandering around and rock counting. You can see there is a substation down there. So we're above the substation and we're just gonna wander through these hills. It was really hot down on the valley floor. It was about 103 and we drove up here and it's also got a nice breeze going on out up here so I don't know what the temperature difference is but it sure feels a lot cooler and we're at significantly higher elevation where I live is about 2800 feet above sea level and this is about 5,000 feet okay I noticed something so you see this rock here it's very colorful and everything but you also see those markings and then you realize they dug a gas pipe line has been buried right along here. So all of this gravel and dirt came from deeper and when they dug the hole. So we're gonna walk over to this hill over here. And this is beautiful country, but there are a lot of utility things going on here where the, the, the natural ground hasn't been covered with debris that's been dug up because I want to find what's on the surface naturally. Okay, so just walking over here, I found this small but beautiful blue agate. That's what I'm looking for, is this kind of stuff. Bigger though, but I do believe I'm heading in the right direction by getting away from all the, the dirt that came from 10 yards under the surface to look for what's naturally on the surface. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. So, so I, I've learned, ooh, another little one right there. I've learned over the years of rock hounding. It's another really beautiful one as well. I wash that up, that'll be gorgeous. So I, I've learned over the years of rock hounding to pay attention to the signs. I actually did a, vi a video, Follow the Signs. I found this location from Rock Hounding Utah, a book. I read about it, I've been here before. But you know, once you get here, you start looking for signs and like that, noticing that there was a pipeline that had been buried and that was, I was kind of looking for rock or for agates in rock that was coming from 20 feet underground, you know, and been dug up. You know, I thought to myself, yeah, maybe that's not the best place. Let's go where the, you know, the soil hasn't been disturbed. So we wandered over here and then we begin to find small pieces that are a good clue and so we stick around this area and start to look more and then we find the bigger pieces so you know you just kind of follow the signs a little bit and it's a lot of fun to do that as well and I have found new places places that I 
have not read about in a book, but just got out, scouted around, and discovered some pretty good stuff. Really, there's a lot of places out there. So books are a great resource. The internet is a great resource, but you can be your own resource as well. Shadow, you are covered. You're, you are covered with sagebrush, little buddy. Yep, beautiful, beautiful agate. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a gorgeous agate. Yeah, we'll keep that. Yep, another beautiful one. Absolutely beautiful. This little spot right here. That's one, a little too small. Right on the side of the road where the grater kind of scooped off the top layer. Telling you, roadsides are often a great place to just meander along, keep an eye out. Uh, another thing I've learned over the years is I can be on one spot uh, and finding nothing and walk maybe 20, 30 yards and then find a lot of things and vice versa. So I find that I just have to kind of keep moving. Right, Shadow? We got to just keep moving, right, buddy? No. There you go, Shadow. Help me. You dig up some things. Yeah, that's a agate, but not a great one. If he uncovers an agate, I'm going to give him a great big bone. So it's kind of nice to be rock hounding in the shade, but it's a little harder to see the rocks. Oh boy. Now that is a big, big, beautiful agate. Wow, I'm going to drop my tool. Look at that. It's dirty on this side, but it goes all the way through. You can see the outlines of the host it formed in. Oh, how beautiful. This will polish up beautifully. What else might we find around this spot here? So you see right inside there, there's some agate inside there. This to me looks to be some form of a calcite host that agate has formed within. I'm, I'm going to take this just because I want to test that white rock. It, if it effervesces, then I think my theory is correct. This, uh, these, these agates here have formed within a calcite host. All right, look at this baby, just sitting right on top like that. Look at the size of that thing. Beautiful. That back when I wash it off, that looks to be solid jasper. Agate, I'm sorry, solid agate. Wow, that's big. That's beautiful. My little pouch is filling up. It's really nice. Very convenient to have the pouch and not have to worry about carrying a bucket. Can you hear the wind just whistling through these trees? Almost sounds like a river. 
but that's just the wind. It's not a road, it's not a river, it's wind blowing through these trees. It's a beautiful sound. Another beautiful agate. Look at that beautiful blue hue that goes through this agate. These are beautiful agates up here. Fill up my other little pocket now. We're having really good luck. It's not like I'm finding them every step. It's not that. I'm, I'm finding them every, you know, four or five minutes I find one. So, you know, it takes some scouting around. If you come up here, don't get discouraged. Just kind of keep looking around because you'll find stuff. Beautiful stuff too. Okay, do you see that agate there? And what it's formed in, to me, I am convinced is a calcite host. So we're gonna take it home and test it, but that's a big agate right there. We're kind of on a good spot, right? Right where we are. I have found several sizable agates here. Okay, it's super windy. I apologize in advance. I'm shielding the wind with my body. <laughs> the gloves are blowing away. But let's let's check out and see what uh, what we've got here. I'll pull it all out and then we'll take a look at it. I'll put everything in a my little portable bucket. I'm gonna wash these rocks off. Okay, I've washed these off here, and after I've washed them off and I've got some good light, I'm able to see you know, what are keepers and what are not. For example, that's a beautiful agate, and I'll throw that in the tumbler, and all this rough coarse stuff will wear off of it, and this will round down, and it'll be a beautiful, beautiful polished agate. This is also a, a beautiful big agate, and I'll throw it in the polisher as well. This will take quite a while, but We'll get it down to where it's beautiful. And when I get home, I'll show you a few of these that I've done before. This here will also polish up nicely. It's definitely a keeper. Now this, you know, the only part of it that I really want is that part there. Back here, this host, I'm just taking this because I want to test the host with hydrochloric acid to determine if these agates have formed within a calcite host, which I think they did. I don't know how much agate's really actually in there, but the calcite will tumble off rather quickly if it's calcite. Uh, same thing going on here. I don't even think this is really worth keeping. There's some agate in there, but I'm gonna chuck that one. That's a good small little agate. That's another good small little agate. All these will tumble up beautifully. So, We'll see how that turns out. I'll show you a few that I have polished from here before. We'll see you there at home. Well, we've made it back home. We have our rocks and I've brought out my testing equipment, the Mohs hardness scale, some hydrochloric acid, identification book if we need it. We have some other things too, but I think this is all we need if we use it all. So let's start off first. The question that I had is, uh, what is the host that these beautiful agates are formed in? Because the, typically the, the agates I found around here are formed in a volcanic host, but this is not volcanic. This is white and a, a, a soft. So to give you an example, this piece right here, you'll remember this piece here. We have an agate and then this host. So the agate 
on the Mohs hardness scale, an agate is between a seven and seven and a half. So let's go ahead and try scratching it, testing it. We'll start off here with an eight. So I'll, I'll test here. I'm gonna need this light that might be a little bit blinding for you, but an eight scratches it. So let's go to a seven. A seven does not. So this is somewhere, you know, in the seven and a half range, typical for an agate. But what about this, you know, this white stuff here? Let's pick a piece, you know, over here. Let, let's try a, uh, a three. I mean, a three scratches it. I mean, it's, it's really very, very soft. So I'm assuming, you know, this is a calcite based, maybe some form of a, I mean, I want to say limestone, but it, it's almost chalky. Let's try dabbing some hydrochloric acid on it and see if it effervesces. We'll put some right there. And that, that is effervescing violently. I don't know if you can see it or not, but all kinds of, of chemical reaction going on there. I'm going to put some hydrochloric acid as a better example for you on the agate here where there's no calcite close by. And yeah, there's no effervescing going on, none whatsoever. But what about if I put it right over here to the edge? And yes, there is, if you can see that right there. Quite a bit of reaction going on. So we now know that these agates were formed in a calcite host, which is really interesting to me. Again, most of what I find in this region is volcan a volcanic host, but they form in uh, calcite hosts as well. Now, here are some agates that I have found in that area before and I've polished up and they are they're just a beautiful I mean there's a lot of blue in them they're just gorgeous if you can see this is I mean, there's a lot of blue in that if you can see that so when I take a chunk you know and throw it in the tumbler and after around three months I get it all worn down and all that host worn off of it and we just are left with the beautiful agate we end up with this beautiful beautiful bluish agate now there was some black jasper up there as well and this is a piece of black jasper another one of the bluish agates this is an agate, but it was covered with a, you know, a host, and it took a long time to get that host all worn off. So that I was down to just the agate. You can kind of see a little pit right there. That's all part of the formation process. I think it's really cool. I'm glad it's there. And this here, I pulled this from not too far from Central. And you can see it's got a lot of the blues in there, but it's also got some white jasper mixed in. Well, central Utah, over by the power utility lines. Beautiful bluish agate, polishes up beautifully. You can find it as beautiful. We had a lot of fun. We were happy to have you come along with us and we hope you join us on our next Adventures of Shadow.